Okay, so we're on to part two, where we're basically going to start um, inking, creating some finished lines. Um, a few things I didn't mention in um, the first um, part is that I did res this file up a little bit, um, res it up to about 7,000 pixels high, and as I said before, um, yeah, um, creating line work at high res in Photoshop really seems to work, um, and that's kind of what I'd use for some kind of an image like this. Um, so yeah, at the moment I'm just kind of like starting. Um, this is a different day to when I had finished the, um, the kind of rough drawing, and I'm a bit kind of rusty. I'm a bit um, hands not entirely dialed in. Probably should have done a little um, head sketch, which is <laughs> um, my habit. Because, um, but you know, basically. Um, with with inking or something like that, it's it's possible sometimes if you start at a you know kind of easy spot, it's easy it is possible to like warm your hand, um, and kind of you know key your eye in without creating too much damage. But here, there's not a whole lot of boring spots on this kind of like whole image, so um, probably like you know it it'll, it'll probably take me in a little while to kind of feel like uh, things are working. I think I like kind of here I'm creating some lines but you know they're not really all going where I want um, that's kind of what I can remember from creating this so um, and it you know can, can be important to um, you know make sure all that stuff is is good at the beginning um, and you see I kind of play around with these teeth a little bit and kind of start to start to get a feel for it um, but you know I think it's important to just kind of start with with some of these things, especially when you know we're doing it digitally, where we can just like you know erase some things if we want to. There's nothing is really critical. Um, what's important is to kind of get in there and um, start to think about it and start to feel for you know like what we're doing. So that's kind of what I done. Just like jumped in, um, probably not at a great spot because um, some of these teeth are ambiguous. Um, and I kind of didn't realize that until I just started inking them. But I'm like, actually, like, the, what what is going on with 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 these is kind of um, undefined. And I, and I was talking about them um, just earlier, um, you know, about how it's kind of um, how I really wanted to make sure that they're kind of um, good. And here, um, as I come to ink them, I'm like, oh, god damn it, this is, you know. Um, this is no good. So what I'm doing here is basically I tried at the top and I was like playing around with it a little bit and um, we just kind of slowed down to a more like kind of realistic drawing pace here so you can um, see some of this and how I, I kind of like start to create these shapes. But what I did is up the top, like sort of, you know, with this top row of teeth, I kind of was, um, I feel like I was kind of trying to do too much in terms of defining because it's very hard to like define those forms like the teeth versus the gums versus the um you know the actual lips and stuff so what i decide here is to kind of play around a bit more with suggesting these shapes not really defining everything like not connecting up all the all the dots and showing a lot of it via overlap um and intimating that these shapes exist and that they overlap by kind of um you know showing like one going in front of the other and as long as i just got that overlap and that um kind of depth then i don't really need to draw in everything um it kind of will all start to suggest itself and just kind of placing this tongue in there because it's important to you know how i saw some of the some of the teeth and that kind of thing so so you see there, I just put like, you know, I, I make the, um, like the marks, for like the spiky marks for the teeth. And then I just put that little dot right at the bottom, which kind of um, is like hinting at this form. Um, and what I'm doing here is just like erasing out. I, I, I like that, the curve of that tooth there, like the big one just kind of in the, in the foreground. So I'm going to try and keep that and erase everything out and try again. Um, so yeah, it's like re really important to you know not not feel like you know you kind of got to just progress linear in a linear fashion with um, kind of inking digitally, because you know again there's lots of disadvantages to um, you know inking and drawing digitally. So 
um, take all the advantages that it offers in terms of being able to redo stuff and um, undo stuff and yeah is the the critical point is to get it get it right um, so here I am I'm following the same kind of pattern where I draw those things I put a little few suggestions for how the form is gonna um, translate and again what I'm doing there by like erasing is I've um, got the light the lines layer set to multiply um, you can see in the layers palette and um, foreground color is at the moment black and background color is white and when I swap them with um, X keyboard shortcut then that basically makes the you know the foreground color white and when I paint onto this multiply layer that basically creates transparency so I'm able to cut into a lot of these shapes and kind of um, you know play around with it almost as if it was a, like a real hard eraser or some kind of white out um, and that can be really kind of important so you can see there I'm just like I'm actually playing around with a lot and I'm thinking about like you know um, what I'm doing and how this is going to apply to everything and what kind of drawing I'm doing and um, you know whether I'm going to put you know some more key line kind of outlines on things or whether that's going to work um, you know you don't always need to go into a drawing um, you know having it all completely sorted out um, a, a lot of it can be you know kind of um, a process of trial and error um, so here yeah you can see trying to follow some of that same same kind of idea that we were talking about before where before I've been trying to like put in far too much of the gum I think and now I'm just kind of suggesting some of it and I think that's going to show the form better but it's hard to tell at this point and mostly what I'm doing is kind of um, instinctive based off um, how I know the color will play um, once I put color over it and what can be done so I know that basically we're going to have this hard contrast between the teeth and the gums and I don't need to really define that because it'll go in with the color and um, you know the shadows will probably um, you know add a lot of depth there so I don't actually need to put heaps in um, and it's kind of you know it is that kind of subtle form where there's not a lot of like hard um, black shapes in there And so now I'm just kind of moving on to the, like, just inking the, the major kind of um, bits and getting a lot of the outlines in there. And basically it's, it's a good idea to kind of start to, from objects that are in the, right in the, in the um, foreground and are kind of in front of other objects. Um, here I'm just playing around with the mouth a, a bit more and kind of trying to... Um, flesh it out and, and that's because I kind of started to I kind of move around the page again trying to kind of um, you know start with forms that are like in front of all the other forms because that means I can like flow back um, quite quite easily and it all kind of starts to work um, if I kind of start inking the, the first forms right so you can see like that that kind of arm there was I was drawn pretty well. Um, I feel like the over, overall shapes are kind of working pretty nicely. So it's just a matter of kind of really almost just tracing what's there and just copying it. Um, yeah, not, nothing too complicated, but um, just kind of moving through it kind of fairly quickly. Um, and again, I think these are this is sped up a little bit, but not as much as, as some of the rest. It's probably at 150 percent so just a little bit faster than I'd actually be drawing um, again if I let this run for the whole kind of time it would it would take a long time so yeah like, as I was saying with that with that kind of hand because because I um you know figured it out pretty well in the in the pencil stage put that extra um, bit kind of on it um, although now I'm kind of realizing that the fingernail wouldn't go there it's kind of the finger creases up um, like rolls up one more time um, but yeah because I kind of got most of it sorted out um, now is really just kind of like you know pure kind of inking um, it's a fairly simple um, drawing to kind of do although I'm having to figure out this fingernail a bit and play around with the shapes a couple of times um, you know think about you know how these lines are going to actually show kind of what kind of form is going to be there so um,
and basically I just kind of put like often because um, I know these fingernails are going to be black more or less um, I just kind of put a bit of like that kind of squiggly line in there mostly just because um, it'll give it a bit of texture and um, once it's darkened up um, with the colour because it'll have a dark colour underneath it then it's going to be really like dark on dark so I can put a lot of texture in there and that'll just add a bit of a um, bit of complexity to the image so there's a lot of zooming in zooming out and trying to like you know just gauge the flow of everything just um, see where it's all going see that I'm not you know like putting too much detail in one area or um, you know like getting carried away with something and I'm looking at some of the other hands and how the other hands have kind of been drawn to um, figure out like the final lines for this and just putting a little again those few extra lines um, really add a lot of depth um, so you see like yeah if I'm trying to get a line and I kind of can't quite get there I'll, I'll just keep undoing it and until I until I can get it So it's kind of one part pen control and one part kind of, you know, knowing when I've got the right line. And, you know, you can see there there's a fair bit of, like, kind of chicken scratch going on. Um, you know, again, that's chicken scratch is not best practice, you know, and chicken scratch is where, you know, we're just kind of like going, you know, just creating lots of little lines to create one big line. Um, but, you know, I don't know, for some reason it kind of works for me. Um, and generally I just kind of worry more about the, the big form um, and I kind of like how it often adds some motion to, to everything it uh, kind of stops it from being too clean um, which suits my style so you know it's just an example of where you know something you know something might not be recommended by maybe some art teachers or art books or whatever but you know if you can make it work for you you can make it work for you um, at least that's where I'm at at the moment you know Um, but you know I, I really like when I kind of ink more, more or less the stuff that you know I'm kind of inking quote unquote again is um, you know it's, it's if I just kind of drew it with a really dark pencil or a really kind of dark pen I, I've never been into creating super finished lines um, it's just not my style but uh, if that's something that, that you want to do then it's still totally possible to do all that stuff um, in Photoshop it's just a matter of um again like kind of penciling for something that's um, really kind of finished and figuring out a lot of those line weights and how a lot of that stuff goes um, and then figuring out the brush making sure the brush is going to taper um, to the point you want you know I'm basically this is like a real kind of mechanical pencil style um, kind of you know tool that I'm using so it's not really about like thick to thin lines and all that kind of stuff and um, you know that that could that that could be just that you know I've kind of learnt the tools that are in Photoshop and I've learnt the kind of styles that seem to work, um, and through doing that, that's kind of how this style has evolved. You know, it's it's maybe it's I didn't necessarily choose it, um, but yeah, you you can get a, a range of kind of you know line styles, and we'll, we'll go into that um, a, a little bit. Um, but yeah, the the general idea is just that. Um, you know, I, I think often if, if you get the form right, um, the lines can kind of be wh whatever you want. You know, they can be rough, they can be clean, they can be, um, you know, thick, thin, chunky, whatever. If, if the form in general is kind of right, um, the design is right, the flow of everything is right, then um, a lot of that stuff is just kind of irrelevant. Um, you know, you can kind of ink things in, in a variety of ways. You know, yeah, I've I've always been like a relatively sketchy artist, and you know, creating really polished stuff has never been my forte. So you know, that's kind of where this sensibility comes from. Um, but again, I mean, even with these, when you know we, we're looking at them quite um, kind of you know close up, and 
you know, certainly if you download the PSDs, you can look like really closely at these in high res because, you know, one of the problems with this video tutorials is that, you know, we're always looking at stuff a bit compressed um, by the video um, um, encoding. So, you know, you never get to see it always 100%. Um, so, yeah, you can see like how rough these lines are. These lines, these lines are kind of rough, but um, also, you know, a, a lot of really nice kind of ink work um, that's done, you know, traditionally is, is quite rough and doesn't look, um, you know, that fancy until you kind of um, scan it in and, you know, kind of level it all out. Um, you know, it's, it's all about the process. So what's important is like kind of what ends up um, on the finished page. And that's really all that matters. Everything else is kind of a little bit... Um, kind of I don't know it's kind of inside baseball it's a bit it's 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 like interesting people will talk about you know brush versus pen versus this versus digital versus vector versus whatever and really it's kind of you know um if, if you get it right people often just can't pick what you've done it in you know because it's like um you know people are often like how, how do you do you do the lines in whatever and i'm like no i just do them in photoshop and they're like you don't use something else or you know it's like no um just photoshop um and it's just because i've just gotten used to it enough that i can kind of do this this style in photoshop um and i think if you give any kind of style enough time um you you kind of figure it out and you figure out how to um, get that look with the tools that are available um, I'm a big believer in kind of um, just kind of limiting your options a little bit and then just seeing what your like your body like kind of biomechanically and mentally what you can do what you're capable of if you just um, say well hey look this is the these are the things I have to draw with um, what can I create with this and can I kind of express myself can I um, you know, create the images that I have uh, in my head and can I get them down and I, can I communicate them to people? And, you know, I think that's, that's like the critical thing to always keep in mind is, um, you know, keeping that stuff um, at the forefront um, as opposed to, you know, obsessing over style or like little details and all this kind of stuff too much is that, you know, if you're having fun and you are, um, you know, like communicating well, then I think that's that's like the most critical thing. So here you can see I'm just again like I started with that um, um, like in the middle, like the one where the fist is just on the screen right now, um, because it was kind of in front of most of the other stuff, so it kind of had to be done. Uh, and then this arm below it was kind of in front of most of the other stuff, so I kind of did that. And that's mostly why how I'm making the decision of where to go first is. Um, what's in front of what because it just means um, the subsequent lines are a lot easier um, I'm probably yeah, thinking about like kind of what I want to happen like underneath his chin there I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably just going to keep it kind of quite ambiguous again just like some and this is just some subtle kind of hinting at rocks and, and, and stuff mostly um, you know I, I might go and paint a little bit of this out um, doesn't matter, but for now it's just kind of like suggestion of some rocks and stuff. And finishing off this like hand thing, because in order to draw the rocks underneath it, I need to finish it. Um, whereas before, um, it wasn't quite critical to the to all the rest. So you're just thinking about the anatomy of, the, of that kind of wrist area and like where that's intersecting with the hand, how all that stuff's working. Um, and drawing some like you know quick little kind of car shadows and the thing I do with like with my inking with these car shadows is I kind of just draw it in you can see I've drawn that little shape and then I just kind of shade diagonally sorry like just kind of vertically um, or diagonally but you know in this case vertically um, and what that does is it says that there's not really much shadow information there um, I'm kind of purposefully not shading with the form I'm saying this is just shadow um, and I know from experience that when I put color over that it behaves a certain way um, and 
I found like that is a that is a good way to kind of say something is kind of cast shadow or that it's just kind of dark is um kind of you know you cut a graphic shape and then just kind of um you know create some tone in there and here I'm kind of starting with this with this mouth and as I'm doing it I'm thinking like uh I, this is not really working that well um but I'm just going to have a bit more of a, a crack at it and then come back to it. So just finding all these forms, again, like that kind of mouth of his was like in front of most of that other stuff. And that's why it needed to be kind of inked first. And here's like probably a little bit too much drawing that I'm having to do, um, which, you know, Drawing is fine like at the inking stage, but in this case it's kind of um, stopping me from creating nice lines because I'm having to kind of be tentative a bit and find the form um, at the same time. And I think often like nice lines come when we're kind of finding things, um, sorry, when we're like not finding things on the, on the page, we're kind of, you know, just focusing on like creating nice lines and, and not, a, not a lot of else. Um, or not a lot of other trial and error, you know, there's certainly lots of people who um, are really good at um, you know finding a lot on the page in the inks, but um, you know they just know again so that that concept of knowing exactly what you um, what you do and don't kind of have in your style and um, what what you know you can ad lib and what you know you're going to need to figure out. And, you know, I think people who, who do that and have, you know, like they make up a lot in the inks, they have quite a process to it. Um, that, you know, there's a lot of actual critical thinking going on there. Here I'm just kind of creating um, like a buckly thing like on the fly. Um, it's not too hard to do that kind of stuff if you need to make it up. And I'm going to play around with this arm, like probably like a, a, a fair bit, just kind of trying a few different patterns um, on it because it's kind of, it's a little bit important. Um, it, it's like the major contact point, like it's very narrative based, um, like how that hand is kind of going. So, um, and the extent to which I render it will kind of, um, versus, you know, kind of blend it out and put some like speed in there. Um, that's going to kind of affect um, you know, a bit of the narrative, so it's it's quite critical there. Um, I've got to make sure it's kind of um, feeling right, feeling like it's got the right amount of motion to it, and a lot of that is just kind of um, striking that balance between abstract kind of speed lines or kind of motion lines and just kind of shading with the motion, not necessarily shading with the form, but shading with the motion, and, um, you know, in that case, the form and the motion are kind of lined up fairly nicely, but it's important to get that right. here again like inking that kind of little thing um his like um kind of leg guard thing because um, it's in front of other things and here i'm just going to get into a mess with the belt buckle and make the mistake which i always seem to do when i draw belt buckles which is like forgetting how they actually are made this is again not a mistake of um ability to draw this is just a mistake of understanding what I am drawing um, and kind of being sloppy with reference and makes it very hard to to draw a, a good buckle because um you know it's it's a little bit of a complicated complicated object to draw um, but you know there's very very easily defined rules um, and for some reason I it's like a dyslexic thing I often just get it the wrong way around and then just need to look down, look at my own belt buckle and go, ah, oh, that's right, god damn it. So yeah, just creating a bit more form here and 
again playing with that thing like I've, I've made sure to give like all the buckles and um all the all the little things I'm trying to give them all a bit of form and see doing that that thing down there where I've kind of hooked the line over and basically the the negative space between those lines is creating um, the form and it's kind of feathering it a little bit and that's just creating some texture it's creating some um, you know little bits like that and that'll go a long way okay I'm just like pushing that buckle a bit because I think it was like again it's drawn a bit tentatively um, with a bit too much of a curve on it and that kind of often happens when you're trying to make something up on the fly um, is that the, it's hard to kind of really push the shape and here I go um, having another go at that kind of mouth because again that is also like a really critical area um, and just like thinking about how the teeth are going to go um, kind of in there because it's quite a complex thing and probably is important to design this guy's mouth probably more than I have because um, his like mouth like the outside of his mouth like his lip kind of curves down so much um, it's unsure whether or not his kind of how his jaw is structured um, and like where his teeth are um, like in, in terms of access relation to um, you know the rest of his head so again just kind of feather, feathering some stuff in there um, and you know being a bit abstract about it like I'm creating these kind of divergent like kind of patterns of like tone where you've got like you know three or four kind of lines just kind of um, you know straight lines and that's quite an abstract thing but if you kind of overlay them and um, kind of put them at different different angles we can get we can suggest a lot of form and I think um, you know it's, it's really important to understand when we're kind of drawing line like this that um, you know often abstracting things and trying to define all these complex curved shapes if we make them more um, kind of um, straight I guess um, if you make them more like kind of solid um, and um, we kind of define the edges as being straight um, if you break up like a curved line and make um, it kind of into planes then it's a lot easier for our eye to read some of that stuff um, because you know we, we're not trying to interpret these infinitely curved forms we can really see like oh, okay that is a plane that is a plane that is a plane um, so it is a good idea to kind of think about some of this stuff and you can see I'm doing that with a lot of the shading is kind of breaking it up um, more into planes than kind of trying to get really finessing it and that just makes the whole thing more graphic it's moving it away from being like a really kind of finessed um, kind of you know shaded line style which I just don't want to do it's just not where um, the style would work and I don't think um, a lot of the detail that I'd put into it like in general would support that kind of style so it's a good mix of having some tone but because I'm abstracting some of the tone um, and making it, yeah, like into these kind of, you know, um, like, you know, scratchy, like little bits of tone here and there. Um, yeah, it, it makes a lot of that stuff um, work in a way that if I, you know, if I kind of infinitely shaded everything in a, in a really kind of re realistic, like plausible way, um, in a way that I don't think would work. So, yeah, it's important to, to figure out some of those details as well. Um, and figure out how that stuff fits into your style. So I'm just playing around with a couple of different, um, you know, like shapes and how that kind of um, armor stuff could go on the spikes. And I think I just looked at the reference then, and I'm like, actually, the way I kind of draw it on it is that these spikes were kind of like black I think that just made the whole pattern work a lot better um, than if they were kind of all separated and 
yeah, those little details are often important. It's important to like you know, remember the refer- reference and um, you know get all that stuff. Um, make sure it's just on hand because you know I was playing around with them for quite a bit and I just couldn't really get them to to look right. And as soon as I kind of did that, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get it. It's got this kind of like buckle on his some um, like scabbard putting in just a little kind of ad limbing a little um, buckle there a little bit um, a few shadows under everything just kind of fleshing it out so I just kind of move through the move through the piece but you know I couldn't really put them in um, you know underneath his kind of you know like the guard of his um, helmet um, until I put in what's next to it um, because you know I, in order to put those sh- shadows in there and those shapes in there nicely you need, you need to be able to see it all so here you can see um, I'm kind of playing around with this for, for quite a while um, with the nose I'm just kind of trying some different ways to kind of actually ink it because I constructed it um, in most of the other drawings and it kind of had that other constru- that construction line to define the nostril and I'm like I don't be interesting to see how it actually works um, I probably have to wait until color to figure that out um, but actually, the, the mistake I'm making here, which I will fix um, much later, right at the end, is that um, the way I've kind of drawn the the nostril that we can see, right, is by kind of having it as one smooth arc. But the way that we can see it's um, foreshortening, like on the other side that's um, furthest from us, is that there's this little notch in it as if like kind of the flanges of the nose are different to the the tip or the ball of the nose and that's actually creating I think a lot of the confusion because um, it's like describing two different forms Um, one different form kind of you know on on our side and another as it kind of goes um, away and I think when I fix that in the end it kind of just instantly is like oh yeah that just feels much better but you know not realizing that I it's very it's very easy for me to kind of waste um, you know two or three minutes kind of playing around with that nose when really the problem that I'm trying to solve is um, not possible to solve there so here here what I've done is I've realized that there's two things I've forgotten to draw and this can happen, and this is this is kind of really good to put in a in a demo like this. Is um, what I realized is that I didn't really define this arm guard of his that well, and the other thing I didn't do is draw the big monster's hand around the the girl, um, and both those are pretty pretty important. Um, so yeah, what what I need to do is figure out how his arm guard is going to go here because. Considering the trouble I've kind of had playing around with, um, you know, a lot of the other armor, which was already quite well defined, it would be, um, you know, a lot of messing around if I was to try and just go in and ink um, that kind of armor um, and just kind of make up some kind of, um, you know, kind of, I, I don't know what kind of bit of armor it is, but it's kind of like a gauntlet thing to give him some kind of big um, gauntlet that kind of covers most of his forearm. So I'm just kind of playing around with some different ideas. Um, cause I think trying to design in ink is, is like problematic, um, because it just, it's very, becomes very restrictive, it becomes very hard to see, um, you know, like what is, is the problem cause, um, you know, it's, it's a bad design or is it just because, um, I can't actually design what I want to design cause I'm being so tentative cause I don't want to mess up other lines or something. So it's important if you just, to be able to just really like go in there, hack it out be like eh it doesn't matter um so you know just playing around with some different kind of stuff um because in in the sketch he has this kind of weird gauntlet thing with these tentacles coming out of it and I don't really think that's going to work here so I'm going to give him something which is a bit in between um which is which is fine again it's no no not not a problem to like make stuff up at any stage um but, you know, in this case, I, I need to turn on the, the kind of lines again. And basically all I do to do that is I just hid the, the finish lines that I was working on. And what I have um, 
an alternative that's kind of a little bit um, cleaner, I find, to reducing the opacity of the sketch layer, um, you know, at whatever kind of level, you know, if we have like a sketch um, and then we're doing some lines over the top of that, is to put a white layer between it. And a white layer doesn't take up any space in terms of like um, the file size, really. It doesn't um, impact anything. Um, and then we just reduce the opacity of the white layer a tiny bit. And that just basically gives us exactly the same result um, when we're working on this kind of um, thing where we've got like a white background. So what that does is it lets me just hide the um, white layer and then I can instantly see the sketch um, in all its kind of dark like glory, whereas otherwise I have to fill around with the opacity slider. And this is a very small like, point of difference, but the opacity slider just takes longer. And then I got to remember what I set it on. Like, was it, you know, 83 or 84? So it's just a bit of an easy way. I can just turn it on, turn it off. So it's very easy for me to just see my initial sketch by just, um, again, turning off those two layers there. I think they're layer 22, layer 23. So that white layer and, um, yeah, the, although I think actually if I, if I, um, turn that, that white layer would be fine. Um, but yeah, that, that, is a, that is a technique that you can use. So I'm just going in there and I kind of, I found like a, a kind of armory thing I like, but I'm, I'm not sure how this elbow is gonna go. Um, my anatomy knowledge of, you see, I get into it again with like, um, like that other um, elbow, which is like this, is what it looks like from this angle. So I'm just looking at some anatomy and trying to like figure that out. Um, just to see if I can like, you know, plus this drawing a bit, because really um, from that angle, you can choose to probably not draw anything and it'd be fine. Um, it's really a matter of very subtle um, form change that I have to try and figure out how to represent um, with line. Um, you know, and, and a lot of that is tricky. It's like, I could just go and draw it in, but it needs to match the rest of the style. So that's, that's really the tricky thing that's going on here. Um, just trying to kind of figure it out which ones of those like, elbow bones are actually kind of showing. Because um, again, it'll just be like a very subtle, like one or two little lines, but you know, that'll be the difference between it, you know, looking like nice or not. Just adding that little, little bit extra um, amount of realism. So I've decided like that was kind of, that was enough. Um, I kind of figured it out sufficiently. So what I'm doing now is um, I actually realized I deleted the very, very first rough sketch, which was the one that had the um, hand. So like the thumbnail had her um, being grabbed by this guy, the hand, and I'd actually deleted that just to, you know, reduce the file size. So I just opened up the last um, layer, the, sorry, the last um, image, because I rename it um, as I go to final lines. Um, just create a new file, just so I've, you know, always got that last one. Um, so I just opened that up and dragged in the um, the kind of thumbnail so I've got it here and just kind of roughed in that hand then hid the thumbnail again um, and now I've kind of got those um, two, two elements that I really wanted um, kind of penciled in there and I'm just going to what I've done there is this a little trick I use sometimes to give myself a bit of a confidence boost is um, I will duplicate the lines layer and hide the one underneath so that basically I'm just kind of um, because when we're kind of painting on on something like this it's if, if we need to erase we kind of can't just create a new layer um, and then like erase because sometimes we need to erase like the whole drawing um, but what I can do is just like duplicate the layer um, and then kind of work on that one and if I really mess something up then I can always go back to the to the old one and you know there's not really much I could mess up but um, at this point it just like helps me know that basically at this point you know nothing I do is gonna really like trash the the lines
Because sometimes, sometimes crazy stuff can happen. You know, you can accidentally, um, you know, draw some big line over the cross of everything. Um, you know, just just by doing something, you know, like holding down the the shift key in Photoshop or something, um, and it'll just automatically draw a straight line. And if you don't realize kind of where you're um, pointing things, then you know you can just accidentally do that. And once it's done, then you know you can be a good five or ten minutes kind of trying to fix it by erasing out little bits and trying to get it looking as good as it was so um yeah if you've got the file space you've got the computer power to do that it's you know not a problem really to just make a new layer so you know you've got it there And yeah, then obviously hide the old one. So there I'm just like, you know, doing a little bit of on-the-fly construction again. Just to give things a little bit of depth. Again, even a bit of paper has depth. And when I like shade the, the shadow under here, I'm, I'm really going with the form. Um, this is like very different to how I would shade it if I was kind of, you know, doing one of those car shadow things. In this case, um, I'm really trying to, um, underneath there, like shade along the form of, um, to underneath of the shoulder pad, just to kind of turn it and, um, you know, show as much form as I can, even like in the shadows underneath there. Because um, it's not really describing anything, it's just saying and it's kind of turning this way. And that's all. So here I am, kind of just playing around with that, like facial facial stuff, and just kind of putting it in super lightly. Um, but you know, more or less, just kind of um, all kind of all comes together because it was all fairly well um, defined. And you know, I've drawn a lot of faces, so. Again, everything has form. Got to make sure we give this, uh, you know, some sides. But you know, because I've penciled that in with sides, then um, you know, it's it's a lot easier for me to now just ink it really naturally and get a lot of those lines kind of, um, you know, just feeling really natural. Um, you know, I'm not having to cut in and cut out. Um, you know, like I was with that shoulder pad just back there, where I'm kind of like, oh, I got to make a bit of it up. So, you know, especially around the face or something like that, where you don't want any distracting lines, then, um, you know, something is really important. It's good to, you know, draw it all out. You can see I have a lot of goes drawing this, and I kind of, it's probably just in a really difficult spot for my um, hand to arc, so I just kind of chicken scratch it in. And you can see it still results in a fairly good line. So again, this is um, at, I think this is at 100 100% or 150%. So this is kind of closer to the the speed at which I'm kind of inking um, normally and kind of moving through it all. So at this point, you know, I'm kind of fairly warmed up and it's going um, fairly quickly. And things like that, you know, where it's kind of meant to be some kind of chain mail or something like that, you know, just a simple like hatch can often get you most of the way there um you know especially if it's not prominent and i think more than that it, it really kind of again simplifies things and kind of fits in with the with the world a bit better it's an abstraction and um you know sometimes those are done because we don't have time to draw it um, but other times it, I, I find it's, it's actually really critical to abstract it and not draw the whole thing um not you know go in there and with detail because it would just be really distracting 
um, it used to be like a conscious choice to um, simplify and um, make sure what we're drawing is going to kind of um, sit right with the viewer and um, you know interact with everything else in a nice way. So I think what I was doing there is um, looking at some reference for her helmet just to see um, like what lines were going where. And I was like, oh, okay, so the helmet kind of goes all the way around and then the little kind of side guards actually terminate at that. And, you know, just figuring out all those little details. And just the constant zooming in and out is just to check her because I think like, and, and this is really critical when it comes to talking about what I was talking about um, earlier regarding, you know, making sure that the lines that we're using are of the right resolution. You can see like she's really detailed um, because I've kind of drawn her all out most of the, like most of the details um, of her costume and stuff are there. I haven't really simplified that much, but it's just at the limit. Um, of kind of where she's going to affect everything else detail wise um, just because the concentration of lines that are necessary to render all the forms that she um, possesses um, it just gets to a point where there's just a critical mass of lines and visually it's actually going to create um, kind of a noise where it's not going to have the same kind of flow um, as you know the other characters because the other characters are kind of quite simple um, in terms of design and they're much larger whereas she has all the same stuff on her like she has the same limbs she has like a lot more armor a lot more details but she's actually very small so having her up there is kind of actually quite um, like dangerous for this image um, because it would be very easy for there just to be so much kind of apparent detail up there um, just because she's so kind of you know I, I guess I guess she's kind of detailed, but that's kind of probably not the the best word. She's kind of um, yeah, she's got lots of little little bits to her design. They're quite like nuanced. Um, there's less kind of big simple shapes. You know, there's a lot of textures, a lot of pattern. So you know, I, that's why I like zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out to check like uh, are, the, are the lines that I'm making kind of. Um, doing too much um, alright we're just going to have to erase them or is it all going to fit in um, and that's again especially here like you know you could I could render all this hair and do a bit more but you know I'm kind of just hitting the edge of I think where um, it could become confusing and you know we'll probably have to wait to see until the line stage to, to see whether that, that is the case or not But right here you can see um, and where we are now is kind of fine but um, you see like as I kind of add her um, like you know the lower part of her here this is when it's going to start to get really complicated because it's just going to be um, such a concentration of lines um, you really got to kind of make sure all this stuff is um, is, not, is sitting nicely together um, it's so critical for, for line work to, to get that kind of nice feeling where it feels like um, I guess it feels like we can just um, not look at the lines a whole lot we can just really look at the form because the form is um, you know being described and the lines are kind of just consistent and we can you know we, we're not looking the lines are not being distracting because they're all kind of from the same world they're all from the same um, thing and they're not trying to describe more than they could and I think that's the point at which, um, you know, these they don't look realistic, but they look um, cohesive, um, congruent um, with each other. And that's, again, that is really critical. So thinking about maybe like a bit of detail here and there. 
and I'm putting in these like you know very um, kind of loose suggestions of like the shininess of her armor and I'm not sure how that work when I color it um, I haven't done that a whole lot um, so we'll see um, it probably would only take me three or four minutes to probably erase it all after the fact so it's not kind of critical and you see I'm kind of a little bit careful not to put it um, in silly places where it would um, be hard to erase so you know it's it's important to think about you know all these things as we're inking because you know it's it's not a separate process you know this like drawing ink and coloring it's all the same process we, we're just breaking it up because um you know it, it, it kind of breaks up that way um but really it's just um you know they're all part of the same the same process they all interact with each other they all um are really important so here I'm just, you know, now that I'm kind of warmed up, you know, you can see I was kind of drawing those those things, you know, earlier and I didn't feel like they had the right kind of emotion or anything. They were just like a bit static. The lines are a bit dead. And I think that's because what I'm doing, like when I start, is I'm just kind of tracing. I'm not really thinking about the form. But by this stage, I've been drawing so much um, and like inking so much that my brain is just thinking about the form. And as I go to ink, I'm actually kind of drawing, you know, so I'm just kind of like adding those, um, you know, like the furriness to his um, ears and it just kind of, you know, comes out nicely. To me anyway, it looks like it's kind of, you know, that's kind of how I wanted it to come out with a bit more like aggression, um, some nicer strokes that are going to support everything else. And so here I've kind of, you know, put all this detail in here um, and it's getting kind of, to me, it looks like it's getting critical in terms of like the amount of density there. So I'm putting in some blacks to kind of simplify it so that it's not just all like visual noise. Um, just kind of, you know, because, you know, that's what happens. It just becomes gray. Um, but I do think that um, once when I color it, um, in, in the same way that I, I was talking about um, kind of the cut lines of this um, kind of girl when I was like designing her in the first um, week, I was saying, you know, like... You, Often armor can look really busy until we put color on it because um, you know it's it's really becomes heavily homogenized by the the simple like you know simple color and tone we put on it. Um, so often you know it, it can be fine, and if you then it can really work really well to have this complex design. But you color it all one color, and it kind of all fits fits in nicely. Um, so you know we often we can have these quite detailed. Um, designs like that and they'll work fine so here I'm rotating this eye because this has been bothering me um, a bit and I'm just kind of drawing it in, in the eyeball I, I want him to have these kind of those um, you know like kind of white or whatever like no um, kind of pupil and iris just kind of a white eye um, so I just rotated that eye a bit so he's kind of more like he's looking down and I'll play around with that a bit more um, in a, in a little bit too so again like I, I pretty much nutted this guy out um, I don't think there's a lot of fiddling around that's going to be done um, with the inking here it's just a matter of like going through it um, and you know not making any mistakes just paying attention to the um, you know the forms and what's going on and you'll see there what I kind of done with the underarm there um, it's a little bit kind of abstract and a little bit tricky it's I, I and that is because um, you know, with with line, it's it's very hard to define those kind of areas because there's a lot of subtle kind of um, form shifts. So the option is to kind of leave it clean and then just color it, and you do all the rendering with the, your shadow pass um, in the colors, and that's kind of how you define it. Um, but in this case, I'm just putting some kind of abstract shapes in there and just the way the kind of blocks of little like squiggly line are uh, they're just suggesting a bit of kind of form um, and a few different types of planes and that's kind of you know often all we need to um, get to that stage we, we don't really need to, to go further than that um, because again it's that issue of abstracting things um, it's going to make it sit um, and, and you know so we're not our eyes not drawn towards there too much because it's not really that critical 
um, and especially once we color it, um, that's going to knock most of that back, so it's not going to be a focal area. And now I've kind of realized that um, the way I'd kind of drawn this cloth, it probably was correct. That's kind of how I'm imagining the cloth would be. It would be like in a weird shape, but because it's kind of um, not following the form around of the arm, it actually is flattening everything out. Um, because it's following the form of this um, kind of gauntlet he's got on and the gauntlet is in this weird shape where it kind of is um, cut out a bit so that he can move his arm in it. Um, if I follow the cloth around there, it kind of doesn't work quite in the same way. So I just kind of, you know, modified it a bit so it was less um, kind of painful. Because uh, before it was being, it was again, it was trying too much and it was um, kind of not really showing the best form as a result. So here I'm kind of realizing that, you know, like there's this kind of pectoral muscle on his other side is not really there and it probably would be there. So um, I was just playing around to see kind of how I could do it. But I think probably in the end it's um, poor like tangent. It, it wasn't drawn in the best, from the best kind of angle. And as a result, um, it's kind of obscured. And for me to kind of put too much detail in there, um, it's going to draw attention to it because it's going to start bumping. The line is going to start bumping into everything else. And, you know, when you do lift your arm up quite a bit, a lot of the pectoral kind of um, fades away. It, it stops um, sticking out quite so much. So I've just kind of suggested a little bit there. And I'll probably have to define some of that with color because it's not actually accurate as it sounds. It's um, a little bit um, kind of weak in terms of drawing. So again, this, this area is like fairly well um, defined because um, I'd kind of already done most of that because I knew it would be like a bit of a pain um, if I had to do it. So just adding a few little, again, a few of these little marks on the, on the um, hilt and stuff, just just add a little bit of, um, you know, texture and design to it. It's, you know, just adding some of that stuff last minute. And you see, it's important when you're drawing these, like, things is not to pay too much attention to um, putting a bit of a car shed on there, not to pay too much attention to the lines that I'd drawn. You can see that where I actually, um, like, moved that last big line of the blade, what I was actually doing is just following in my head um, the line that I thought that blade would, would take based on where it is um, in relation to the, um, the handle of the sword um, and the um, other line of the sword blade. So, you know, again, not following, not tracing there. Um, I'm redrawing. And um, at this stage, after I'm kind of warmed up, that a, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing here is kind of, I'm just drawing it again um, I'm not. I'm not really tracing it. I'm thinking about the form again here. I'm like drawing this form. I'm trying to make sure that all this stuff is kind of, um, you know, fitting together nicely and that it's showing some shapes and stuff. Again, like you know, making up a lot of those details there. You know, I I know what kind of you know this belt buckle I kind of want in there, um, but you know, not wasn't really that dull to find everywhere else. So, you know, a lot of this is kind of redrawing, um, but it's just, you know, there's not, I don't have to, you know, go that far. And, you know, with these leg muscles, it's a really good example of what I was talking about um, with the, like, you know, making what, what are kind of curvy shapes and trying to put some angularity into them um, here and there. And that'll really give contrast to form and give contrast to the line and, it's just, uh, you know, that, those kind of graphic shapes are just much nicer for our eye to um, look at and understand. Just figuring out how much I could get away with kind of blending um, in. And, I mean, at this stage, most of the, most of the drawing is done. Um, all I really need to do is kind of fiddle out and you know play around with a few details um yeah there's there's not 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 a lot extra to be done but you know this this is the time to fi figure out these things like this nose where i'm like i 
what is going on here and I drawing it um, and you can see like the more I, I do that the more I kind of give it that difference between um, you know I'm, I'm basically not not making the whole shape coherent it's, it's all being a bit weird but I, I keep trying to solve it by um, drawing this because I think the problem is here but in fact um, you see when I change the, the line um, on the on the other side then it kind of figures out because I can't figure it out I'm like that I'm like that nose is a good design I don't understand it just doesn't look right it looks kind of dumpy it looks like it's lacking form it looks it doesn't look solid and I don't know why it doesn't look solid and I think I'm actually like looking at some reference and then kind of going like, you know, it's got this line in it here, but that doesn't really make it any better. Um, and then I'm kind of like, so this is like definitely one of those like drawing puzzles um, where it's like, you know, difficult to know what, what is going on. So to me, like, again, this might be like a very small difference, might be something that only I'm kind of noticing, but um, yeah, I think those like subtle details, especially with, and it's it's just especially important because this um, that's such an important like outline of the design, like his nose versus this guy's like kind of big teeth, all those like little like you know outlines there are just like really really important and nice and critical. And yeah, I, I just really felt like it was kind of, you know, worth spending the time there to figure that out. Um, you know, even it is just like, you know, a couple of millimeters of off in that line. Um, but, you know, just that little bit where it's like not holding this, the symmetry. And, you know, I'm playing around with like, you know, how much rendering could I get away with, away with there? What could I do? But at this point, again, the drawing is pretty much done. Um, it's, it's just a matter of kind of fiddling around with it, really. Um, which is nice to do at the end to just add some extra detail and look back and see how's it all working um, you know what's going on kind of wind down a bit thinking maybe if I add some like tone here but I'm like no he, he doesn't really have eyebrows not really going to work but you know a lot of those a lot of those issues are like just very small things that are to do with um kind of yeah how, how we view it um from afar and like close up and whether or not you know that eyebrow is clear enough from from far away and here i'm like thinking about maybe adding some extra tone there but i think in the end i decide to, to just do away with it because his, his design really is about this kind of you know, like this neck that kind of just kind of terminates in nothing, just kind of becomes part of his torso. So, you know, there's there's a couple more things here that I can do to just like finish it off. And you know, because I'm kind of aware that most of those are pretty basic, like a lot of this stuff is just kind of like super simple. Um, so, you know, it was. I'm quite happy to take a bit of time to like before I do that to, to look at some of those details because you know a because you know um, sometimes it's nice to just kind of like finish a drawing and, and have it done um, but also because you know I've kind of had a look at them and then you know I'm gonna spend a bit of time doing something else and then it'll give me a chance to then come back at them um, some of those hard problems and go oh, okay you know I had like you know a couple of minutes to figure out some other stuff what else is going on um, and you know, often it can be just really easy to just bang, lay something in, get it done um, after I've had a bit of a break from it. So here, just kind of adding some again, like rough rock, like suggestion, because um, this 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 part of the drawing is really is just going to fade away. Um, I do not want this to be coming to the fore at all. Um, but you know, just got to get something in there. So that you know, if if I don't paint over it too much, or if I decide not to paint over it, that there's something there. Again, I'll often like you know add those extra lines and then just kind of delete them. Just go like, no, that doesn't work. I'll try it, zoom out. Again, like 
messing around with my signature far too much. But, you know, it can be important to get that stuff right because, you know, it will affect the composition if I, you know, just like fiddle with the lines too much. So what I've done now is I've just like taken away the, the rough drawing line, like the pencils completely. Um, and there I just put them back. And what I can do now is just kind of like, you know, go through the whole drawing and figure out, um, you know, some extra details. Just finesse a lot of the line weights. Just handle some of those kind of things. Um, and it, often you, you got to wait till right at the end to, you know, get rid of the, the sketch layer, you know, like the rough layer, and then figure out actually what I've got, you know, um, what, what are they going to look like? Because they're not going to have the sketch layer underneath them. You know, I mean, I, I have done styles like that where I do leave that in there. Um, but in general, you know, that's not going to be in there. So this is what actually is going to be seen. Um, and sometimes it's important to, you know, or like sometimes it looks good to, you know, add a bit more like detail and finesse to these. Because um, often there's a bit of the underlying sketch still showing through. And, you know, that is actually affecting a lot of the, um, you know, the tonality of it. Um, it's, you know, adding a bit extra kind of sketchiness or um, looseness to it. And, you know, sometimes it's important to put that back in there. So, you know, here I'm just kind of punching up a few lines, um, roughing up a few lines, actually. You know, I quite like, I created quite a few, like, rough lines around that hand that's kind of in the, in the, in the middle there. And, you know, that's just to kind of give it, again, give it that motion, give it um, some, like, aggression. And just, like, playing around with, you know, finessing some of these lines over here. Again, this um, this like mouth and the, the way it kind of opens is really critical to his expression and his like that real feeling of him just kind of opening his mouth like as wide as it will go. Um, you know, getting the lips and the whole like mouth, all the muscles to feel as if they're kind of stretched. And you can see like down the bottom, like what I'm going to do here is just kind of solve a bit of that stuff, and, um, get a bit more kind of motion in there, a bit more like um, directionality. And often that is, is, I'm not really adding heaps of form here, but um, you can see that is also creating that, like I'm creating these strong lines and then I'm kind of intersecting them a bit. And that kind of just shows, because they're so directional, because they're so straight, um, that really does, to me, it makes me feel like the, the, those muscles are stretched and that they're kind of, you know, almost buckling under the, the pre pressure that, you know, he's applying to his own face. Um, and again, that is very much an abstraction. It's not necessarily what would be happening um, with that form if you were to render it um, in tone. But, you know, again, we're, we're after effect. We're not after reality per se. So, you know, often the, the gesture of the line, the feeling of the line will, um, you know, do so much to um, affect our emotion and, you know, how, how, we, how we read simple things. Again, just adding like a little bit of extra finesse because this is like this whole area in the middle this is where it is like this is the you know it's not the money shot but this is the focus area this is where um you know i, I want people to kind of look and pay attention and by putting extra detail in there um that's what i'm going to do and now that i can see you know the overall detail of the page and i can see like you know the girl up top and how you know thick those lines are and, how all that stuff is playing together. Now I can finesse this stuff a little bit. Um, now I can like, you know, play with line weights. Whereas before that was kind of hard, you know, it wasn't really possible to do that. Um, but now it's kind of, you know, I'm playing around with some tonality there, but getting all these things to overlap, all these things to kind of look right, put, just putting like those one or two little things in there. Um, that's going to finesse it quite a bit. And you can see I like just changed the angle of that um, like gum so that it was actually lining up with the other one um, again really important that if you've got things which are meant to be symmetrical that you draw them symmetrically because um, that otherwise they um, it violates the integrity of the entire form it violates both of them um, and neither of them are as strong as they could be
and you know it's actually difficult to draw things which are not symmetrical but look like they should be you know like if a guy's got really weird kind of face on one side you know it's really can be difficult to draw that because you got to show like ah yeah i know they're supposed to be symmetrical but um you know they're not um and here again just added those couple more like kind of shading tonal lines to the mouth and that's kind of given it just that final um feeling of kind of tension and I'm just playing around with the eye because the eye is again like we are very keyed into how eyes work and um, you know where they're looking and that kind of stuff. So I'm just playing around, seeing if I can get like a better kind of option and just finesse that a bit. Because if I put detail in there, it's it's fine. It's fine for us to be looking at his eye because his eye looks like straight down. Um, except now it kind of doesn't. So. Um, <laughs> Just kind of trying to get it get it right and get the eyelids kind of supporting um, again trying to make it look as if they're like it's wide open putting a bit more tone in there in that you know face and then taking some of it out because i think yeah, it's probably probably a bit too much now we're getting like very close to done i'm pretty sure that's like that's it just a couple more things um just punch out a, a few more again like you know solidify her her face a bit you know just make sure now that i don't have the sketch lines on top of that that all that stuff is some um, you know figured out um, it's all you know um, just the symmetry of those lines the flow of all that stuff it's all going well and that's pretty much where we where we end up. Um, you can see a little bit closer here, kind of how it all turned out. Um, there's some good bits in there. There's some bits that I would probably, um, you know, if I was to do it again, I would, um, you know, play around with some more and finesse a bit more. But that that is always the case. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you got a lot out of this one. It was um, certainly a fun little drawing to do.